Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be refurbishing this Dell Precision T1700 that I bought in an auction for about $44. It should be in working order, so I won't be fixing anything today, or at least nothing related to the computer's actual functionality. More on that later. I'm getting this guy ready for a friend who wants to buy it to put an RTX A2000 in it and use it as a cheap SFF gaming PC, which can be a pretty great use case for these old computers. It looks a lot more modern than the computers that have been featured on this channel in the past, and I like that. It's got an Intel Xeon E3 1245V3 in it, which is basically just an i7-4770. It also has 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 320 gig Seagate hard drive, and something that I didn't think it would have, an Nvidia Quadro K600. Not a super great GPU, but a nice little card to have on hand, and especially a nice little bonus that I didn't realize would be included. After opening it up and taking a look inside to make sure that nothing looked out of the ordinary, it was time to power the system on and verify that it did, in fact, work. It gave me a little warning about the hardware password jumper. That will be an easy fix as all I have to do is put a jumper across a PSWD header. It then wanted me to run setup and after that, everything was working as it should. Now for the refurbishing of the computer. This one will be a little more complex than some of my other refurbishing jobs, as I have a few things I want to do here to make this PC the best it can be for my friend and his gaming use case. He wants a 1TB SSD, so I have that here. I'll do a repaste as always, and you may notice a bit of a weird orange thing here. This is a new 3D printed drive caddy that I put into the system here. I did this because the drive caddy that was original didn't have mounts for a 2.5 inch drive. I originally did this, but while writing the script I had a realization. This is printed in PLA, and PLA is the most flammable of the 3D printer filaments. Even though PLA ignites at 270 degrees Celsius, which is 518 Fahrenheit, a temperature no component in any computer should ever see, it could pose a minor risk and possibly invalidate the system's safety certs. Since this computer is UL listed, it has to meet certain flammability standards and the plastics used in the stock drive trays probably have to meet those standards too. I can assure you that this 3D printed drive caddy does not meet these standards. You'll see this caddy throughout the rest of the video and my next video, but it has been changed at the time that this video has been posted. I use these caddies in my NAS without issue and have no problems with them or fear that they could pose any threat, but I've decided to leave these caddies in my own systems only after realizing that about the plastic used to print them. Anyway, with that out of the way so that none of you can bother me about a fire hazard that does not exist unless there's already a fire, we can move on to the different RAM that I'll be putting in. The system came with 1R by 8 RAM, and I'll be putting in 2R by 8 RAM. I know that this makes a notable difference in modern systems with DDR4 RAM and more powerful CPUs and GPUs. Whether or not this will make a difference here is unknown to me, but I'm certain that the 2R by 8 RAM won't hurt anything. So I mounted the drive in the caddy and slid it in. Again, now the drive is taped into the original with UL listed electrical tape. Then I replaced the RAM, which was a super easy thing to do. And lastly, I was able to unscrew and remove the CPU cooler to perform a repaste. And boy oh boy am I glad that I did. At first, I thought the CPU cooler was still screwed in some. That's how cemented then the thermal paste had become over the years. It took two hands to get this thing loose. Man, that thermal paste was probably acting more as an insulator than a thermally conductive material at this point. It genuinely took me about 10 whole minutes to clean off the cement from the heat sink and CPU. This is easily the worst case I, I've seen in person of dry thermal paste. Here's our Intel Xeon, looking pretty good and ready to do some great work running games. I reinstalled the CPU, put on a pea-sized glob of thermal paste because of the size of this one's heat spreader, and tightened down the CPU cooler again. During this refurbishing process, however, I remembered to plug the CPU fan in, unlike last time. I also proceeded to remove the Quadro K600, as my friend wouldn't want that and his CPU has integrated graphics, so it's not like it was necessary to get a video signal out. I then connected everything and booted it up. It didn't find a boot media, which was to be expected. I then plugged in my install USB and started the Windows installation process. I'll note really quickly that I followed this commenter's advice and remembered to check the CMOS battery. I forgot to record this, so bear with me, but it was very dead. We're talking 1.4 volts. I'm genuinely shocked that the system was posting and functioning normally whatsoever, and I of course replaced it and everything in that department should be good now. Also, during the install process, I followed another commenter's advice. The installer prompted me for a product key, and I didn't have one. Their comment says to click, I don't have a product key, and try to activate the Windows license later once you connect the computer to the internet. It totally worked. I had to select the troubleshoot option in the activation settings as it didn't totally want to do it automatically. 
but that's fine, as it only troubleshooted for about 5 seconds before getting activated, with no questions asked. That's the one thing I love about making these videos. Good people leave good comments that help me out while I continually learn about computers and how they behave. And while I finish up configuring and stress testing within audit mode here, I do want to make a quick note to the commenters who leave useless comments that are rude and provide no constructiveness with their criticism. I have a new policy to inform you of. Two instances of such useless and rude comments, and you're banned from my comment section indefinitely. Constructive criticism is welcome and encouraged, though, so if you have an error to point out or a note to add, please do so in a constructive manner. It helps me out a lot in correcting mistakes and making sure that I keep the information in my videos as correct as I can. With all those changes made to the computer, it's all ready to go to my friend. Now it's just time for the last step of removing the stickers on the top with some 70% isopropyl alcohol, which Dell says to be okay, and cleaning it all up for him. Or at least that's what I would say if that had gone to plan. It really did not. I don't have video of this, please bear with me and my few b-roll images here, though I cannot stress how enough how important this really is. After removing the stickers and drying off the alcohol that I just put on them to eat away at their adhesive, I started to notice something. Was that just a little bit of discoloration? Is the rest of the case just dirty? No. No, no, no. As it slowly became bone dry, I realized, to my horror, that the alcohol had absolutely destroyed the paint finish on the case. That surface in the image was perfectly set in black like the rest of the case before. And no, it wasn't residue from the stickers that was left behind when the alcohol dried up. This was real damage to the paint. I have two of these computers, here's this one side by side with the other. At this point, it seemed that I really only had one true option. I had to pull everything out of the case, sand it down, and repaint it. Before anyone asks, I was fully transparent with my friend about the whole situation, he's okay with it, so don't go telling me I shouldn't try to cover it up and change the system in a way he's unaware of because I did not do that. I don't have any pictures or video of the process, sadly, but in a quick summary, I sanded the old finish pretty well, not to bare metal as that's a waste of energy in this case, as I'm not painting it over with something like white paint and I then got some satin black spray paint and painted the case up. I had never really spray painted before, I know. With a bit of help and several coats, however, the end result looks okay. It's nowhere close to the best it could be, but I can't keep sanding down and repainting over and over until it's perfect and I'm out $200 in spray paint. I'm gonna offer my friend a discount if the paint job really bugs him, as I trust he won't take advantage of that, but I think he'll be fine with it. Here you can see what the repainted computer, the first one, looks like compared to the other computer that has the original finish. Definitely not a match, but it still looks like a decent condition Dell Precision small form factor computer. Well, that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you were able to enjoy this video and maybe even learn a thing or two. I also hope that you were able to learn, at least from my personal experience here, to maybe refrain from using isopropyl alcohol in these computers. It should have been fine, and I've never had issues like this before, but it's certainly worth keeping in mind the risk that this is definitely possible. I mean, hey, it happened to me here. No telling whether or not it may affect you. Anyway, I hope to see you all next time. Goodbye.